Conchita's Diary. Maria Concepcion Gonzalez, 13 years old. In this book I am going to tell about my apparitions and my daily life. The most important event of my life was on June 18, 1961 in San Sebastián. It happened in the following way. It was a Sunday in the evening, and we were with all of the young girls playing in the plaza. Suddenly, Mari Cruz and I thought of going to pick apples, and we set off straight to the place where they were, without telling anyone that we were going to pick the apples. The girls, seeing the two of us were going away alone, asked us, Where are you going? And we answered, Over there. And we continued on our way, thinking about how we were going to manage to pick them. Once there, we started to pick the apples and when we were having a good time, we saw Loli, Jacinta and another little girl coming to see if they could find us. Seeing us picking the apples, Jacinta shouted out, Hey, Conchita, you are picking the apples. Shut up, I told her, the school teacher's wife will hear you, and will tell my mother. Then I hid among the potato plants and Mari Cruz started to run through the field. Loli shouted out, Mari Cruz, stop running. We see you. We will tell this to the owner. Then Mari Cruz returned and we left our hiding place so that we could all be together. While we were talking someone called the little girl who had come with Jacinta and Loli, and she left. The four of us remained alone, and giving it more thought, the four of us returned to pick apples. While we were having a good time, we heard the voice of the school teacher, who, on seeing the branches moving so much, thought it was the sheep, and said to his wife Conciza, Go to the garden, the sheep are wandering near the apple tree. Hearing this, we burst out laughing. When we had filled our pockets, we hurried off to eat the apples more at peace in the path, that is in the Calleja. When we were enjoying ourselves eating the apples, we heard a loud noise like thunder. And we all shouted out, It seems to be thundering. This happened at 8.30 at night. When we had finished eating the apples I said, Oh, what a shame. Now that we've picked the apples, which didn't belong to us, the devil will be pleased and the poor guardian angel will be unhappy. Then we began to gather stones and threw them with all our strength to the left side, where the devil is said to be. When we got tired of throwing stones, and were more content, we began to play marbles with the stones. Suddenly a very beautiful figure appeared to me, shining brilliantly without hurting my eyes. The other girls, Jacinta, Loli, and Mari Cruz, on seeing me in that state thought I was having an attack, since I was saying with my hands joined together, Oh! 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 As they were going to call my mother, they found themselves in the same state as I was and they shouted together, Oh, an angel! Then there was a short silence among the four of us, and he suddenly disappeared. And, returning to normal, and very frightened, we ran toward the church, on the way passing the dance that was going on in the village. Then a girl named Pilai Gonzalez said to us, How white and frightened you are! Where are you coming from? Very ashamed in confessing the truth, we said to her, from picking apples. And then she said, for that, you are coming like this? We all answered together, it is because we've seen an angel. She said, is that true? We, yes, yes, and we continued on our way in the direction of the church. The girl told this to the others. Once at the door of the church, and thinking it over better, we went behind it to cry. We met some young girls who were playing and when they saw us crying they asked us, Why are you crying? We told them, Because we have seen an angel. They ran off to tell the schoolmistress. When we had finished crying, we returned to the church door and went inside. At the same time, the schoolmistress arrived very frightened and said to us at once, My children, have you really seen an angel? Yes, senora. Could this be your imagination? No, senora, no. We have really seen an angel. Then the schoolmistress told us, Let us go pray a station to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament in Thanksgiving. When we had finished saying the station we went to our homes. It was already nine at night and my mother had told me to come home during the day. And on that day it was dark when I arrived. When I got home, my mother said to me, Didn't I tell you to come home before dark? Very frightened because of two things for having seen the figure so beautiful, and for coming home late. I didn't dare to come into the kitchen, and I leaned against the wall, very sad. And I said to my mother, I have seen an angel. 
she responded to me, on top of coming home late, you come saying these things. And I answered again, but it's true that I have seen an angel. She responded the same thing, but she was already more doubtful that I had seen the angel. This was at 9.30 at night. Later that night we did not speak any more about it. It was an ordinary night, just like any other. The 19th arrives. When we got up, the people had begun to talk. Those four girls saw something, since they came down with such expressions. Others responded, It could have been one of those big birds, since it was dark. Others said, Or perhaps some little boys surprised them while they... Or they were dreaming. Well, everyone had his own idea about the thing. It was a day in which they talked about nothing else. They asked us to describe what we had seen. And very happy with the beautiful figure, we were glad to tell them, since there were some people who doubted it was true. We told how he was, how he was dressed, very brilliantly. Most of the people laughed at us, but it was all the same to us because we knew it was true. We had these conversations at ten in the morning, when we went to the school. When we arrived at the school the schoolmistress asked us, My children, are you certain of the things you said yesterday? We answered at the same time, Yes, senora. We saw an angel. The other school children surrounded us and were amazed at what we were saying. We acted the same as always, undisturbed. When we left school, each one went to her own home. But this day Jacinta and Mari Cruz went together and met the parish priest, Father Valentin Maricolar. Very alarmed, he said to them, Look here, look here. Is it true that you saw an angel? They answered together, Yes, father, it's true. I don't know. I don't know if you're mistaken, he replied to them. Smiling, they said to him, No, don't be afraid that we saw an angel. Then they went to their homes. The parish priest walked around to see where he could find me. Finding me near my home, he became very nervous and he said to me, Conchita, be honest, what did you see last night? I explained everything to him. He listened very attentively, and finally he said to me, Well, if you see the angel tonight, ask him who he is and why he is coming, see what he answers. I said that I would do what he said and the pastor left, and went to Loli's house to see if our stories agreed. I continued walking toward my house. Loli responded the same as the rest of us. And so he was more and more impressed because the four of us agreed on everything. Finally he said, Good, we are going to wait two or three days to see what he will tell you and whether you are going to continue to see this figure that you call an angel. The pastor added, Then I will go to the bishop. As always when we came home, we ate and then went to the school again at two in the afternoon. In my house they were making a small repair. I went to the house of the woman from whom we buy the milk, and she said to me, is it true that you saw an angel? Or is this just something the people are saying? I answered, It's certain that we saw an angel. She continued to question me, How did you see him? I explained it to her in such a way that she listened very closely. And then smiling, she said to me, Since I have a good opinion of you, I believe that you saw the angel, but the others, no. Then I said to her, But all four of us saw him, lowly, Jacinta, Mari Cruz, and I. She didn't answer me at all. When I came home with the milk, I said to my mother, Mama, I'm going to pray in the Calleja. This was heard by a stonemason named Pepe Diaz, who was there working to repair our house, and also by my brother, Aniceto Gonzalez, who was helping him. Then Pepe said laughing, Yes, yes, let her go. Why not let her go pray? My brother objected to this, Conchita, you shouldn't go. The people will laugh at you and us too. They will say that you are going around saying that you are seeing an angel. And that you are lying. But of course, I insisted I go to my mother. And while this was happening the other three girls came and called me. My mother was nervous and said, Oh my God, what kind of trouble have you all made? We said to her, No kind. Then my mother, doubting it was true and wanting to be left in peace, permitted me to go. We were very happy and we went to this place called the Calleja, a little piece of heaven. When the people saw us they asked, Where are you going? We responded, To pray in the Calleja. But the people laughed at us and said to us, Why don't you go to the church to pray since that would be better? 
and we responded to them at the same time. Because the angel appeared to us there yesterday, and we're going to see if he'll appear to us again. They called this place the Kayeha, and when we arrived there, we began to pray. The people looked at us, but the young boys hid in or near the corn and threw stones at us. We told them not to throw stones at us, but they just laughed and continued throwing the stones. We were there praying the rosary, and we waited for a while to see if the angel was coming. The sky was very cloudy and it was very windy. When the afternoon arrived, we went down to the church, but in the road we met the teacher who asked us, Have you gone to the Kayeha today? Yes, we answered, but we were very sad because we had not seen the angel. She added, Do you know why he hasn't come? Surely it's because it's so cloudy. It was 8.30 at night. We went to make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament, and then we each went to our own homes. When I arrived my mother asked me, Did you see the angel? I said that we had not seen him today. Then she made me do my work as usual. We ate dinner, then I went to bed at a quarter to ten. Since I couldn't sleep, I started to pray. And then I heard a voice that said to me, Don't be troubled, you will see me again. As they told me the following day, the other three girls heard this voice as well. I stayed worried after hearing this voice and I continued praying at great length, until I fell asleep. All of this happened on June 19, 1961. The 20th of the same month came. We led our daily lives the same as we did before. The people continued making the same comments even though things had changed. They said that at best it was our imagination. Since we had not seen anything on June 19, they thought that the angel wouldn't appear to us again. But they didn't know what had happened to us during the night, what we hadn't told anyone. On the afternoon of the 20th, the other three girls and I did our chores and we went to school. When we came back to our homes, we told our mothers that we were going to pray at the Kayeha. My mother said I wasn't allowed, that if I wanted to pray in the Kayeha, then I should go to the church. My mother, and also the parents, brothers, and sisters of the other girls, were worried. They had a very great conflict because even if they were inclined to believe the truth, they also thought the opposite. When I was telling my mother T, as the three girls arrived at my house, Loli, Jacinta, and Mari Cruz, and they shouted, Please, senora, let Conchita go. Let her go. But why do you want to go make fools of yourselves? We said at the same time, We aren't going to make fools of ourselves. We are going to pray, and to see if the angel comes. No, Conchita isn't going. You can go if you want, my mother exclaimed. They left, but very slowly, until they could no longer be seen because of a wall in the way. I remained very sad. My mother changed her mind suddenly, and with a loud voice called, Loli, tell the other girls to come here. Soon they arrived, and my mother said to them, If you do what I tell you, I'll let Conchita go. They were very happy and answered, Yes, we'll do it. You three go alone now, as if you were going to play there, without saying anything to anyone. When you arrive at the Kayeha, Conchita will go secretly so that no one will notice. They went but they were a little afraid because they thought that my mother was joking, so they went very slowly. I said to them, go and then I'll come. After a little while my mother let me go, and I went and found that they were upset because I was late. When we were all together, we were very happy and we arrived at the Kayeha where we began to pray the rosary. When we had finished, the angel hadn't come. We decided to go to the church. And when we got up, we had been kneeling, we saw a very brilliant light surrounding the four of us. We saw nothing else except the light. And we screamed with fear. Then the bright light disappeared and we went to our houses because it was already 9.30. We didn't go to the church because it was already very late. We didn't say anything to anyone when we reached our houses. The priest from the village warned us that if we saw something again we should tell him quickly, but this priest lives in a village called Cosio, which is seven kilometers away from our village. Our parents would not give us permission to go to Cosio alone after we told them that we wanted to speak to the priest. On all of these days there was no one in the Calleja except the five of us, the angel, Loli, Mari Cruz, Jacinta, and me. The twenty-first arrived. It has been an ordinary day. The people already believed a little more. In the evening, 
After having done what we had to do, we asked permission from our parents to go to the same place where the angel had appeared to us. But while going to the Calleja, seeing that the people did not believe, we told a woman named Clementina Gonzalez that if she wanted to come with us. But she didn't want to come alone since she had her doubts, and she called another woman named Conciza. Noticing us going together, other people joined us also, and arriving at the Calleja, we began to pray the rosary. We finished it, and the angel had not come. The people were laughing very much and said to us, Now say a station. And so we did, and on ending it the angel appeared to us. It was a Friday. We asked him who he was and why he had come. But he didn't answer us. When the apparition ended, the people were very nervous and exclaimed, Oh, my children, when you see the angel again, tell him to forgive us for not believing. And some people began to cry. A woman named Clementina wanted to call all of the people in the village, and she went to do so when the angel disappeared. A woman said to my aunt, Who was among the people? Did you see the angel? My aunt answered, No, I haven't seen him, but if you don't believe in this, you don't believe in God. The other women asked this so that my aunt wouldn't be so influenced, but she continued believing. All those who saw us went down to the village telling everyone about it, since they were very impressed. No one in the village had ever seen or heard anything like it. The twenty-second arrived. We continued the same as always and the priest from Cosio as soon as he found out what the people had seen and heard, said that he was going to tell everything to the bishop. But the people said that he should see it first, and that he should stay in the village. On this same day at 8.30 at night we went to pray in the same place. The people went with us, including the priest. We prayed the rosary and when we finished the angel appeared to us. Upon seeing us in ecstasy, the people began to yell and to say that it was true. A professor was there also. His name is Marine. Some people in the village said that he had prepared us to do this and they wanted to put him in jail. The people repeated this to the guards who had come at the beginning. When the apparition ended, the professor brought us to the home of a man in the village in order to question us about how we had seen the angel. The twenty-third arrived. We went to the same place to pray the rosary, but there were many people there. Those from the village had told the people in Cosio, Puentinanza, Rosadio, etc. At 8.45 the angel came and the people from the village were as impressed as those who had come from neighboring villages. When the apparition ended, all of the people kissed us. That day the guards did not want the professor to take us for questioning. We went with the parish priest to the church sacristy, where he questioned us by calling us in one by one to see if we agreed. We told him how we had seen the angel. Then when he finished questioning us, we all left together, and he said to the people, Up to now, everything seems to be coming from God, and all four girls have the same story. When the people heard this, they were very happy that it had come from God. The 24th arrived. It was Saturday and people came to the village from many different places. We did the same as on the other days, that is, we prayed the rosary in the Calleja. All of the people from the village accompanied us. When we arrived at the place, the visitors were already there. They had come early to get a spot near the front where they could see well. On this day, we didn't have time to begin the rosary. As soon as we arrived at the place where the angel had appeared to us, we saw him. We had never heard him talk. On this day, we saw a sign underneath him that said, IT is necessary too, and on the second line there were Roman numerals. We asked him what this meant, and he smiled, but he didn't tell us. When the apparition was over, the young men of the village took us away in a cart so that the people would not crush us or kiss us. They took us to the church, and Father Valentin, the parish priest, took us into the sacristy one by one so that we would tell him what had happened. We said that we had seen a sign and he asked us what it said, or what letters it had, but we told him that we had not concentrated on the sign. The priest was impatient to go to the bishop to tell him everything. Then he asked us to go to the professor and tell him to write it down if we remembered any of the letters. Sunday, the 25th, arrived. Each day more people come from different places, and the people are still enthusiastic. Among all of these people there were five priests, but they did not believe. A teacher from Cosio also came. We arrived at the Calleja, 
and we began to pray the rosary. The people from the village had made a square with stakes and ropes so that the people could not approach us. Only the priests, our parents, siblings, and the doctors could come near us. On this Sunday, many doctors came, and, as I already said, five priests. When the angel came, the teacher from Kosio was there. That day, he didn't believe and he said that it was all a comedy. He said to my brother, Your sister does this very well. But my brother did not respond at all. That day, while I was seeing the angel, our family doctor grabbed me, lifted me up, and let me fall from a height of about a meter. And on hitting the ground, my knees made a sound as if they were broken. My brother wanted to stop him from doing this, but a force inside him kept him back. I was unaware of all of this but the people told me about it later. When the apparition was over, the people were very excited and they all wanted to see my knees. And I didn't know why. Then it was about 8.30 at night. We went to the church to pray to Jesus in the sacrament. Then they brought us to the sacristy where we met many doctors and priests. They asked us a lot of questions. Some of the priests didn't believe, some did. After a while, we looked at our legs and they were full of punctures and marks from those who had scratched us. But they didn't hurt us, although the marks were there. Monday, the 26th, arrived. We didn't have an apparition that day, but we did have apparitions on Tuesday and Wednesday. We didn't have apparitions on Thursday or Friday even though many people came. Saturday, July 1st, many people came, including many doctors. They came up to the village in cars. We had an apparition very early that day at 7.30. Of course, it was almost day, so the people saw very well. That day the angel told us that the Virgin Mary would come on Sunday, under the title Our Lady of Mount Carmel. The angel brought the sign again, and we didn't know what it said. This day happened just like the others. They brought us into the sacristy to question us, and we were accompanied by the young people from the village until we reached the same place as on the other days. The 28th arrived. We continued, very enthusiastic about what we had seen, the angel with his sign, smiling. We did everything the same as always. The people who had seen us told those who had not seen and of course, more people came. On Tuesday the 27th we did not have an apparition, but many people came. In the afternoon we went with the others to pray the rosary in the Kayeha, and we prayed together with the people. When we finished praying, we didn't see anything and we were very sad since we thought that we would never again see anything. The people were very disillusioned. But when God wants it a certain way, it will be that way. After praying the rosary we went to the church to pray a station to the Blessed Sacrament, and then we went to our houses. The people from the village were sad because they believed. On the other hand, the strangers who had come and had not seen anything returned laughing and they said, It's obvious. Since there are many of us, and the people in Garabandal are not used to this, they didn't dare do these things in front of us. The 28th arrived. We were a little sad because we had not seen the angel. We went as usual to the school. When we got out, the people in the village, seeing us so sad, wept and kissed us, saying, Pray so that he will return. When the evening came, we went to the Kayeha and did as usual. The people prayed the rosary with more faith than ever so that the angel would appear to us. And on finishing the litany, he appeared to us and came smiling more than ever. We asked him, Why have you come? He smiled and did not answer us. We began to see him around nine, and it ended at ten. It seemed to us a minute or less, because we were so happy with him. Thursday, the twenty-ninth arrived. We saw him, same as always, and we did the same thing as always. Friday the 30th everything was the same. Saturday the 1st arrived. That day many people came since it was the Virgin's day. Perhaps she would appear to us. We went to the Kayeha as always to pray the rosary and the people accompanied us. At the end of the Holy Rosary, the angel appeared to us, smiling, and said, I come to announce to you a visit by the Virgin under the title of Our Lady of Mount Carmel who will appear to you tomorrow, Sunday. We were very happy and we said to him, Let her come right away. He smiled, and then we said to him, What does this sign you brought mean? The Virgin will tell you about it. This day, he spoke to us about many things. 
he told Jacinta, Loli, and Mari Cruz how the first day they were going to call Conchita's mother because they thought she was having an attack. They laughed, because they were I don't know what that day. He was there two hours, but it felt like two seconds to us. After he said to us, I will come tomorrow with the Virgin. And he left. How sad for us. The people were very happy and they asked us, What has he said to you? And we told them what he had said. The people from other places believed and were very happy and wanted to tell those who hadn't seen. The angel was dressed in a long, flowing blue tunic without a belt. His wings are somewhat long, very beautiful, and pink in color. His face was neither long nor round. His nose was handsome, his eyes dark, and his face tan. His hands were fine with short nails. His feet weren't seen. Month of July of the year 1961, Sunday, the second arrived. We went to Mass and to pray the Rosary. The Rosary was at three in the afternoon. After the Rosary, we went to the highway below because some of my brothers were coming that day and we wanted to see if they had arrived. It is five kilometers from San Sebastián to Cosío, and we walked four. The people knew us since the four of us walked together, and they had seen us in photographs. They stopped us and gave us gifts, boxes of candy, rosaries, caramels, and lots of things. When we came to the village, a large crowd was waiting. There were ten or eleven priests, doctors, an abbot, and many cars. Since we were very far from the village, we decided to return. Some of the people from the village descended on horses to find us. One person we knew saw us and told us that if we wanted to go up they would bring us to the village. We said yes because my brothers had not come. When we arrived at the village many people and priests were waiting for us. It was six in the afternoon. We went to the Calleja to recite the rosary. And before we had arrived there, the Virgin appeared to us with an angel on each side. One of these was Saint Michael. We didn't recognize the other one. He was dressed like Saint Michael. They appeared to be twins. At the side of the angel on the right, at the same height as the Virgin, we saw an eye of great size. It appeared to be the eye of God. That day we talked much with the Virgin. And she talked to us. We told her everything, that we went to the field every day, that we were tanned, that we had put the hay in stacks, etc. She laughed. We told her so many things. We said the rosary looking at her, and she prayed with us to teach us to pray well. When we had finished the rosary she said that she was leaving. And we told her to stay a little while, since she had been there only a very short time. She laughed and told us that she would return on Monday. When she left, it made us sad. Then some people kissed us and asked us what she had said. Some of the people didn't believe since we had talked so much. How could the Virgin talk and listen so much? But the majority did believe because they said it was like the case of a mother who hadn't seen her daughter for a long time, who tells her everything. And how much more we who had never seen her. Besides, she is our mother in heaven. They took us to a sacristy and a priest named Father Francisco Odriozola questioned us one after the other. Afterwards, he told the people what we had said to him. That is how Sunday, July 2nd ended. It was a very happy day because we saw the Virgin for the first time. For we are all always with her, whenever we want to be. The Virgin comes in a white robe, a blue mantle and a crown of little golden stars. The feet are not seen. The hands are open and there is a scapular on the right one. The scapular is brown. Her hair is long, a dark chestnut brown color, wavy, and parted in the middle. The face is somewhat elongated. The nose is also somewhat long and fine. The mouth, very beautiful with slightly full lips. The color of her face is tan, but much lighter than that of the angel, different. The voice is very beautiful, very unusual. I don't know how to explain it. There is no other woman who resembles the virgin, either in the voice, or in anything. Sometimes she carried the baby in her arms. He is very small, like a newborn baby, with a round face the same color as the virgin's. He has a very small mouth, and his hair is slightly long. He has small hands. He is dressed in something like a blue tunic. Monday the third arrived. We were very happy to have seen our Heavenly Mother. In the morning, 
The first thing we did on Monday, July 3rd was go to pray there at the Quadro, the four of us together. Then we went to our homes to do what our parents ordered. And then we went to school. At the class we met our schoolmistress, Senora Serafina Gomez. She began crying and kissed us, saying, How lucky you are, etc. When we left the classroom, everybody was talking about the same thing. All were very impressed and happy, and they believed very much. Our parents felt the same way. As for Loli's family, her father Seferino said, There's never been anything like this. It was the same also with her mother Julia. Jacinta's mother, Maria, believed very much too, and her father Simone even more. Simone and Maria had several children, and one of these is Jacinta. The whole family has an excellent reputation in the village. If we performed some practical joke, Jacinta's father would say that the apostles had done the same. And he would begin to explain the things we did. To him it appeared that everything we did was good. Mari Cruz's father, Escolastico, did not go to Mass much, and he didn't say anything about this. Her mother Pilar believed on some days and did not believe on others. My mother Anacita really believed without doubting anything. How much we talked on that Sunday. My brothers really believed in so far as they saw, and not only did they believe, but it also made them quite spiritual as it made many people. There were people who liked what happened on that Sunday. And there were others who were not impressed. In our daily life, we did what our parents told us to do. In the afternoon we left the school at 5, as we had spent a very happy Sunday on July 2nd, and as we already had such a desire to see the Virgin again, we went to the Calleja, and we began to say the Rosary. We were alone. And when we had finished and hadn't seen her, we said nothing at the time. We weren't surprised, nor were we sad, as she could still come later. Then, since she hadn't come, we went to our homes and did what we were told to do at home. When the hour was approximately the same as Sunday, the first day on which we had seen the vision, our families, who were now believing a lot, said to us, you should go to say the rosary in the quadro. And we told them, we haven't been called yet. We answered that it was like an interior voice, but that we didn't hear it with our ears, nor did we hear ourselves called by name. It is a J.Y. There are three calls. The first is a very little joy. The second is somewhat greater. At the third we become very excited and feel great happiness. And then she comes. We would go outside after the second call. For if we would go after the first we would have to wait a long time, since from the first to the second there is a long wait. We told our families about the calls. They were astounded since they had never seen or heard this. After our conversation with them, we had a call and we told them about it. The four of us were together. And there were many people and some of them didn't believe, which could have been because they had never come. They spoke to the parish priest, Father Valentine. Why not put two in Loli's house and the other two in Conchita's, my house? And Father Valentine said, that's a good idea. We're going to put Loli and Jacinta in Loli's house and Conchita and Mari Cruz in Conchita's house. He told our parents and siblings about this. Our parents agreed and they separated us that way to see if the four of us would come together at the same time. And after a half hour we received the second call. And the four of us came together in the quadro at the same time. And the people were amazed and asked, How is it possible that everything is happening to them at the same time? As soon as we arrived at the quadro, the Virgin appeared to us with the child Jesus. But the angels did not come. She came with a broad smile and the child was smiling too. And the first thing that we said was, Where is Saint Michael and the other angel? And she smiled even more. The people and our parents who were there gave us articles so that we might present them to be kissed. And she kissed them all. And since we like to make up games for the child Jesus, we picked up pebbles. And I put them in my braids, lowly put them in her sleeves, and Jacinta gave them to him. But he didn't take them, he only smiled. Mari Cruz said to him, If you want me to give you caramels, they have brought me some, so if you come with me, I'll give them to you. But he didn't say anything. She said many things to us, but she didn't allow us to tell these things. The apparition began at 7.30 and ended at 8. When it was over she said to us, Stay with God and with me also, that made us sad. 
and we said goodbye, goodbye. The last thing she said to us was, tomorrow you will see me again. Tuesday the 4th arrived. On July 4th, we were the same as usual, and the people of the village and our parents, brothers, and sisters were believing more each day. The strangers who came were very enthusiastic in telling other people to come. We continued leading our normal lives, doing what our parents told us. Evening came on Tuesday, July 4th, the third day of seeing the Virgin. Many people had come, and priests. There was a rosary at six in the evening at the parish church and we had one call. The church was full of people and on the main altar were about a dozen priests and photographers taking pictures. When the rosary was finished, we had two calls and we decided to run to the quadro. The people ran after us. Some did not have time to get there. Mari Cruz and I were a little higher up than Loli and Jacinta. The two of us were inside the quadro itself, and the other two not inside. And the people said that for all that we had run, we didn't perspire. And they were perspiring and arriving all exhausted. And they were amazed. But it was as though the Virgin carried us. The Virgin was smiling as usual. And the first thing that she said to us was, Do you know the meaning of the writing that the angel carried beneath him? No, we don't know. She said, It gives a message that I am going to explain to you so that you can tell it to the people on the 18th of October. And she told it to us. It is the following. It is necessary to make many sacrifices, do much penance, to visit the Blessed Sacrament. But before that we have to be very good, and if we don't do this then a punishment will come. The cup is already filling up and if we don't change then a very great punishment will come upon us. This is what the angel's sign and the message that we will tell on October 18th mean. Then, after she told us this, she left. It began at 6.25, and it ended at 7. She told us all of this on the first day, but I did not understand it then. The following day she told us that she would explain it later. Then she told us what the message meant, and what we had to say. She indicated to us that we had to tell the message in the doorway of the church on October 18th. We told this to Father Valentine so that he could tell it in the pines at 10.30 at night. The Virgin told us this so that we would do it like this. But the commission said that there were many people, and it was raining, so we couldn't give it personally. They said it would be better to proclaim the message at 9 or 8.30. The commission said all of this, and so we did it. October. The four of us went up to the pines at 9.55. When we arrived at the pines, F.R. Valentine was already there. He read it for himself, and afterward he gave it to us so that we could read the message to everyone. The four of us read it together. The people couldn't hear us well, so a man read it also. After reading it, we went down to the village, and when we had reached the place called the Quadro, the Virgin appeared to us. She said to me, F.R. Ramon Maria Andrew has doubts now. This made me wonder very much. The Virgin told me where he had begun to doubt, what he had been thinking and everything. August two months before the message, they took me to Santander by means of a priest named F.R. Luis. The night before going to Santander, there were many people and among them there was a priest with a white habit. And it surprised me very much that he came with a habit of this color. I had never seen anything like it. On that day, my mother had told me to ask the Virgin if she should let me go to Santander. I told her that I would ask her. It was six o'clock in the evening when the four of us had already received two calls. At that time, a priest had brought us a box of caramels. His name was F.R. Alfonso Cobian. He had brought the candy for the four of us. And when we were eating them, the third call came. And we dropped the caramels on the road. How we would have liked to eat them. But we liked more, much more to see the Virgin. And besides, the third call is a thing that takes us. And we don't know how we went to the place called the Quadro. We did not have time to get to the place mentioned. And she appeared to us before we arrived. Since we wanted so much to know who was the priest who had come in the white habit, we asked the Virgin. And the Virgin said nothing, she only smiled. But we insisted again, and after a long time she said, He is a Dominican. Then I said, A Dominican? And she said, Yes. That same day, I asked the Virgin if she would let me go to Santander. And she didn't tell me no. That day, the apparition lasted an hour, but it seemed like a minute to us. 
She told us herself that she had been there an hour. They wanted to take me to Santander because they said that I was the one who was influencing the other girls. Then they brought me to do a test. The first day I was there, I had an apparition near a church named Our Lady of Consolation. And there were many people there. So many people were there that the armed police had to intervene. That day they made various tests on me. And when the apparition was finished, they took me to an office for a priest and a medical doctor to question me. The priest was named Fr. Francisco Odriozola and the doctor was Dr. Pinnell. They said to me, How do you do these things? Are you crazy? How do you deceive people in this way? And then he said me, straighten up. Look at my nose. I am going to hypnotize you. When he said to me, look at my nose, I laughed. And he said to me, don't you laugh, this is not a laughing matter. And that day they didn't do anything more to me. The next day they took me to some doctors to see if I was ill. They took me to one whose name was Morales and several others. And they all told me that I was well and that these apparitions were a dream. And they said that I should stay there in Santander to amuse myself, so that I could forget everything that had happened to me, and not go back to have more apparitions. Then my mother, as she was so convinced that there was nothing wrong with me because of everything that the doctors told her, left me and went to Garabandal. Some nieces and a sister of Fr. Odriozola came every day to pick me up at the house in order to go to the beach and the fairs, which until then I had never seen. Since I went to the beach every day, the virgin did not appear to me. At the end of eight days, a man intervened to take me to the village and my mother came to find me. This man was Mr. Emilio del Valle Gochiga. I will remember him all my life. On the day that they took me back, I went to Dr. Pinal to tell him that I was going. He became very angry and said to me, well, many things, so that I would not go. I told him that I was not seeing the virgin, but that the others were, it seemed to me, and that the message seemed to me to be true. Then he told me to sign a statement. I signed it. Afterwards he told me that I should go talk to Bishop Doroteo, and I did it. They all acted very nice to me, after all of this. When I arrived at the village on returning from Santander, several priests and many people came to meet me, because Loli and Jacinta had said in their apparition that I was coming on the road, as I really was. The Virgin had told this to them while they were in the church. Mari Cruz was waiting for the Virgin on her balcony that night, together with a crowd of people. The following day, when coming down from the pastures, my mother and I met my aunt, Maximina Gonzalez, who was very excited and told us, Do you know that the Virgin's voice has been heard on a tape recorder? Then I asked her, What did she say? My godmother answered, Loli and Jacinta told her, Speak. Go speak. Then we heard on the tape. No, I won't speak. The people my godmother told us began to cry and were very emotional because they had heard the virgin's voice. In those days while I was in Santander, two Jesuit priests had been in the village. Fr. Ramon Maria Andrew and Fr. Luis Maria Andrew had come, like many others, without believing. Then one day Loli and Jacinta had an apparition at the Pines. This was during the day. These two priests were there and when they saw the girls in ecstasy, they believed. When a short time had passed with the two girls in ecstasy, Fr. Ramon Maria Andrew thought, If this is true, let one of the girls stop having the vision. Immediately, Loli's vision left her. After a few minutes, the virgin appeared to her again. The priests admitted that this was a test. One day, the four of us, Loli, Jacinta, Mari Cruz, and I, had a vision. Many people were there and among them were Fr. Luis Maria Andrew and a seminarian, Andres Pardo, and Fr. Royal Marine, a Dominican. It was already nighttime when the Virgin appeared to us that day. At the end of the rosary, the four of us were in ecstasy, and we began to walk toward the pines. When we arrived there, Fr. Luis Maria said, Miracle! Miracle! And he was looking upwards. We saw him ourselves and in our ecstasies we have never seen anyone except the Virgin. On that occasion we saw Fr. Luis, and the Virgin told us that he was seeing her, and the miracle. The people said that we prayed a creed at the Pines, that was the first day the Virgin taught us to pray, 
and that afterwards we went down to the village in the same state. When we arrived at the church, the Virgin left our view. As the Virgin had not appeared to Mari Cruz for several days, she stayed in ecstasy with the Virgin. She went into the church. And before the altar of the Virgin of the Rosary and St. Michael the Archangel, and she began to pray the creed very slowly with the Virgin. Mari Cruz said that the Virgin said the prayer ahead of her to teach her how to pray slowly. After the creed, Mari Cruz prayed a salve and then she made the sign of the cross very slowly and very well. She talked with the Virgin and said, Oh, how good that the infant Jesus comes. How long it has been since he has come. Why do you wait so long to come to me and come to the other girls more often? Various people who were near her heard this, and Fr. Luis Maria Andrew and a seminarian, and Fr. Royal Marine were among them. The following day the four of us went to sweep the church. While we were sweeping, Jacinta's mother came, very upset, and said to us, Fr. Luis Maria Andrew has died. We didn't believe her since we had seen him the day before. We left the church half swept and went to find out more. They said that when he was about to die, his last words were, Today is the happiest day of my life. What a wonderful mother we have in heaven. After that, he died. This happened on the road to Reynosa. When he left San Sebastián de Garabandal, he went in a car with Carmen Fontanita and her husband Fido Fontanita and several others. Fr. Luis Maria Andrew's mother became a cloistered nun 48 hours after her son's death. Several days after the death of Fr. Luis Maria Andrew, the Virgin told us that we were going to speak with him. On August 15th, the Feast of Our Lady, there were many tourists who had come to amuse themselves and they were causing scandal. That was the day that the Virgin told us we would talk with Fr. Luis Maria Andrew. But since there was a scandal, he didn't come. At four in the morning on the next day, at the same time that Fr. Luis had died, the Virgin appeared to me in my kitchen and said to me, Father will not come today, but he will come tomorrow. On the next day between eight and nine at night, the Virgin appeared to us, smiling very much as usual, and she said to the four of us, Fr. Luis will come now and speak to you. After a while he came and called us one after the other. But we didn't see him, we only heard his voice. It was exactly the same as when he spoke on earth when he would give us advice. He also told us something for his brother Fr. Ramon Maria Andrew. He taught us words in French and how to pray in Greek. He also taught us words in English and German. After a while, we didn't hear his voice anymore. Then the Virgin spoke to us and stayed with us for a moment before leaving. The Virgin told us that day, Tomorrow you will hear a voice, do not be afraid, but follow it. On the next day, and at the same time as on the previous day, the Most Holy Virgin appeared to the four of us. For several minutes she was smiling very much. But she didn't say anything to us. After a few minutes, darkness came upon us, and we heard a voice call us. Then Mari Cruz said, Tell us who you are. If you don't, we will go home. While we were hearing the voice, it was very dark. We didn't see the Virgin. But afterwards she came and she said to us, Don't be afraid. And she spoke to us for a while. That night was the first night she kissed us one by one. And then she left. The next day, at almost the same time, the Most Holy Virgin appeared to us again and told us to pray the Rosary. We said this as though no one told us, but she said to us, I'll lead and you answer. She prayed very slowly, saying, Holy Mary. We also said, Holy Mary. Then we prayed, God has blessed you, Mary, the same as when we prayed the Rosary, but very slowly. When we reached the salve, she asked us to sing it, so we sang it. When we finished praying the Rosary, she gave us a kiss and before she left she said to us, I'll return tomorrow. As she had said, she came. And she told us the same thing as on the previous day, recite the rosary. And we began the rosary. That night we went to the places where the Virgin had appeared to us at the beginning. After our ecstasy, the people said that we had gone up to the pines, and that we had gone from pine to pine praying on our knees. Until this time, the four of us had been together in the ecstasies, Jacinta, Loli, Maria Cruz, and I but now we had begun to have ecstasies by ourselves in our houses. The Most Holy Virgin called us whether we were together or separated. 
but we always saw the Most Holy Virgin while we were in ecstasy. As Marie Cruz already had an apparition earlier and had gone to bed, we asked the Virgin to teach us some songs to sing to Marie Cruz. We would compose a word, and then the Virgin would aid us with the others in the following way. Get up Marie Cruz, the good Virgin comes with a basket of flowers for the little girl. Mari Cruz, Mari Cruz, how sad you make us. Pray very much to the Virgin so that she will return to you. Mari Cruz, Mari Cruz, don't you smell the lilies? The Virgin brings them for you so that you will be good. That night the Virgin stayed with us from nine at night until seven in the morning. That night we played Los Tios, Hide and Go Seek, with the Virgin. Two of us hid and the other two searched for us. During one of our apparitions, Loli and I came down from the pines with many people. And we saw something like fire in the clouds. It was seen by the people who were with us and also by those who were not. When it was over, the Virgin appeared to us, and we asked her what that thing was. She told us, I came in it. It was the feast of Our Lady of the Pillar during another day of our apparitions, at which Loli and I were present. While we were looking at the Virgin, a star with a very long tail was seen beneath the Virgin's feet. Several people saw this. We asked the Virgin what it meant, but she didn't answer. At times the three of us wanted to be together. As our parents didn't allow us be out of our homes at night, sometimes when we went outside after the rosary, after already having had two calls, we looked upwards like we were seeing the Virgin. And so we went together down the street. Then our parents and the people followed us. And later the Virgin came, and we were together. We never faked the entire ecstasy. When we were together, when one of us lost her shoe, the Virgin would say to the other, Put her shoe on. And one of us would put the shoe on the other. And when we were alone, if we lost our shoe, we went the whole apparition without it. And at the end, the Virgin would ask us where our shoes were. In our apparitions, we would ask the Virgin to perform a miracle. She didn't say anything to us, she smiled. We told her, perform a miracle so that the people will believe, since no one believes. But she continued to smile. The angel, St. Michael, gave us unconsecrated hosts from the beginning of the apparitions. We had eaten at the time, but he gave them to us all the same. This was to teach us how to receive communion properly. One day he told us that we were to come to the pines on the next morning, without eating anything, and that there should be a young girl with us. And we brought the girl. And we did as he told us. When we came to the pines, the angel appeared to us with a golden chalice. And he told us, I am going to give you communion, but today these are consecrated sacred hosts. Say the, I confess. We prayed it, and afterwards he gave us communion. And after receiving communion, he told us to make our thanksgiving to God, and after we making our thanksgiving, he told us to pray the soul of Christ with him. We prayed it. He said to us, I will give you communion tomorrow too. Then he left. When we told this to the people, some of them did not believe, especially the priests, since they said that an angel could not consecrate. When we saw the angel again, we told him what the people had said. And he told us that he had taken the hosts from the tabernacles on the earth, and they were already consecrated. Afterwards, we told this to the people. But some of them still doubted. He gave us communion for a long time. The Most Holy Virgin told the four of us, Loli, Jacinta, Mari Cruz and I, to go pray the rosary in the quadro. Some days we went at six o'clock and other days we went later. Jacinta and Mari Cruz went at seven in the morning and Loli did not have a definite time. Later, since it was not convenient for Mari Cruz to get up so early, she went at eight o'clock. And at six o'clock like us, Jacinta continued alone, with her mother and people of the village. During Holy Week, the Virgin told me to go at five o'clock in the morning. And so I went, since the Virgin always wanted us to do penance. June 22nd as we had so often insisted that the Virgin and the Angel perform a miracle, on June 22nd, when I was receiving Holy Communion from the hands of the Angel, he told me, I am going to perform a miracle. Not I, God, through my intercession and yours. And I asked him, and what is it going to be? And he told me, when I give you Holy Communion, the sacred host will be seen on your tongue. I thought it over and asked, 
Surely when I receive communion from you, the host is seen on my tongue. And he told me that it wasn't so, that the people around me didn't see it, but that on the day when he would perform the miracle, it would be seen. And I said to him, But that's very small. And he smiled. After telling me this, he left. On the following day, as there wasn't a mass in the village, after reciting a rosary in the quadro, I went to pray a station at the church. And before I went inside, the angel appeared to me, smiling very much, and he spoke to me as usual, Pray thee, I confess, and consider that you are about to receive God. Then he gave me communion, and he told me to say the soul of Christ with him. I did it. When I had made my thanksgiving, I asked the angel, When is the miracle going to be? He told me, The virgin will tell you that. June 19th after that he left. This apparition took place on June 19th. After the angel told me that he was going to perform a miracle, I told it to the other girls, Loli, Jacinta, and Mari Cruz. I told them that the angel was going to perform a miracle for us. At night on that date, when asking the angel when miracle would be, the virgin came. She came smiling very much as usual. And I said to her, The angel S.T. Michael told me that through his intercession and mine, God our Lord is going to perform a miracle. She didn't say anything to me and I said, When is the miracle? On Friday the 29th you will hear a voice that will tell you. And I said to her, Whose voice will this be? But she didn't say anything to me. The first person I told that the angel was going to perform a miracle was a priest, Fr. Jose Ramon Garcia de la Riva. That same day, I also communicated this to Loli, Mari Cruz, and Jacinta. July 18th Friday came, and as the Virgin had told me, I felt a voice while I was at the Pines which told me, July 18th will be when the miracle or little miracle, as you call it, will occur. A uh, little miracle. This is a diminutive expression used in the region where Conchita lives. After the voice told me the date, I went and told my mother and my aunt Maximina. I told them that the angel was going to perform a little miracle, and I told them what it would be. They responded, If this miracle really happens, then everyone will believe. I make this explanation, but from then on I did not tell anyone else outside of the people I have already mentioned. On one day on which the angel brought me communion I used the occasion to ask him, When will I be able to tell the people that the miracle is going to happen and of what it will consist? Two weeks before, he responded. When the apparition ended, the people from the village asked me if the angel had told me anything about the miracle, since I had already told the people in the village that the angel was going to perform a miracle, but they didn't believe. July 6, 1962 When the day arrived in which I had to announce the date, I told the people of the village and I wrote letters. F.R. Valentine, who doubted that the miracle would happen, told me not to write any more letters. It probably won't happen, he told me. A man named Eustaquio Cuenca was in the village and told me the same thing as F.R. Valentine, not to write any more letters. And I said to them that the Virgin and the Angel had told me to announce the miracle. But in spite of that, the people of the village didn't believe it. When July 18th arrived, the village was full of people. Everyone wanted to see the miracle. There was a festival in the village, and next to my house there was a dance. There were two things together, some were praying the rosary, and others were dancing. Some of these people wanted to stop the dancing, since they were afraid that if there was a dance, there wouldn't be a miracle. And at one time, a man among those who wanted to stop the dancing, Ignacio Rubio, asked me if I wanted the dancing to stop. I answered, dance or no dance, the miracle will happen. And then they didn't argue about the dancing anymore. When night came the people were upset. But since the virgin and the angel had told me that the miracle would come, I had no fear, since either the virgin nor the angel had ever told me a thing would happen without it happening. At ten at night, I had a call, and at twelve another. At two o'clock, the angel appeared to me in my room while my mother Anacida, my brother Aniceto, my uncle Elias, and my cousin Lasioka were with me, as well as a young woman from Aguilar del Campo, Mari del Carmen Fontanita. The angel was with me for a while. And he told me, as on other days, pray that, I confess, and think of whom you are going to receive. I did this. And afterwards he gave me communion. 
and after giving me communion, he told me to say the soul of Christ, and to make my thanksgiving, and told me to hold out my tongue with the sacred host until he left, and the virgin came. And I did this. When the virgin came she told me, they all still do not believe. Afterward she told me to pray a rosary, and I did. Some saw this miracle that God our Lord did through the intercession of the angel St. Michael completely, but others only saw the form on my tongue. In that moment, they believed firmly in what they had seen, and those who did not see it believed because of the reports from those who had seen it. After a few days had passed, the people began to doubt, and everyone said that I had put the form on my tongue. There were other similar comments. A Franciscan priest, F.R. Justo, didn't believe what he had seen, and he said to the people that he hadn't seen it, that it was a lie, that it was I who had done this. After two or three days, a letter arrived for me from this same priest, asking my forgiveness for thinking badly of me. He told me that it was the devil who had tempted him. A few days after this letter arrived, three priests came from F.R. Justo. He had explained to them the things that had happened here regarding the Most Holy Virgin. These priests told me that this Franciscan priest had passed many sleepless days and nights thinking about the sacred form, but finally he had reacted well and he accepted what happened. He believed everything. The Most Holy Virgin announces the miracle to me. The Most Holy Virgin has foretold to me a great miracle that God our Lord is going to perform through her intercession. Since the chastisement is very great, as we merit, the miracle is also immeasurably great, as the world needs. The Virgin has told me the date of the miracle, and what it will be. I should tell people eight days before it happens so that they will come. The Pope will see it from where he is, and so will Padre Pio. The sick who attend the miracle will be cured and the sinners will be converted. Those who see this great miracle that God our Lord will perform through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin will not doubt. And now, all will await this great day of the miracle to see if the world will change and the chastisement will not come. At the beginning of it all, the Virgin told the four of us, Loli, Jacinta, Mari Cruz, and I, that we would contradict each other, that our families wouldn't get along well, and even that we would deny that we had seen the Virgin and the Angel. Obviously, we were very surprised that she told us these things. And everything that the Virgin told us at the beginning happened during the month of January. 1963. We came to contradict each other, and we even denied that we had seen the Virgin. We even went one day to confess it. But we felt inside that the Angel and the Most Holy Virgin had appeared to us, since they had brought a peace and internal joy to our souls, and a great desire to love them with our whole hearts. For their smiles and their speech and what they told us made us love them, love them very much, and give ourselves completely to them. When we went to confession, it was without thinking about it, without believing that it was a sin. We went because the parish priest told us that we should go to confession. We doubted a little, but a doubt of a type that seems from the devil, who wants us to deny the virgin. And afterwards, we told our parents that we hadn't seen the virgin, but that the calls and the miracle of the sacred host were true. In my heart, I was surprised to say these things when my conscience was completely calm about having seen the Most Holy Virgin. The parish priest, F.R. Valentin Maricolar, gave us ten rosaries and five Our Fathers for penance. And after we had said this, in a few days the Virgin appeared to us again. Seferino, Loli's father, had told the commission of doctors to come. Their names were Alejandro Gasca, Felix Gallego, and Celestino Ortiz. And on the night that they came, they began to question Mari Cruz, Jacinta, Loli, and their parents about the reason that they were saying that they weren't seeing the Virgin. I don't know what they thought. What I do know is that they said that I performed the miracle of the host, and they explained it in their way. Obviously, they didn't know what they were saying at the time, and they allowed themselves to be controlled by the devil. And after that day, they didn't have any more apparitions. I had apparitions on the same night and until January 20th. After that I didn't see her again. Now Loli and Jacinta have come back to reality, to believing that they have seen the Most Holy Virgin. Really, how could they not believe? Mari Cruz still continues saying that she hasn't seen the Most Holy Virgin. I also doubted a little that the miracle would come. And one day, 
While in my room doubting if the miracle would really come, I heard a voice that said, Conchita, do not doubt that my son will perform a miracle. I felt this inside, but as clear as if I had heard through my ears, or even clearer. It was without words. It left me a peace, a joy, more than when I see her. The first person to whom I told this was Placido. Later, he told it to the others. They are called locutions. They could be called a voice of joy, a voice of happiness, a voice of peace. And then, I didn't doubt anything again. But the days passed. And the voice didn't return. That made me suffer. But I understand. How could God go on giving me such happiness so often, without meriting it? The locutions did me much good. Because it was as if the most holy virgin were within me. What happiness! At the end of the month, again I heard that voice of interior happiness without words in the church. I prefer the locution more than the apparitions, since during the locution I have her in my very self. Oh, what happiness with the most holy virgin within me! And what shame, to be so bad! But that is the world. But I like even more to have Jesus within me, Jesus, who gives me the cross to purify me, and also to see if I can do something for the world with my crosses. With the help of God, since alone I am nothing. A prayer that I say to Jesus is, O oh my Jesus. On July 20th, 1963, Conchita had an impressive locution from our Lord. Since Conchita left the church saying that she had had an interior locution, a priest asked her to relate the circumstances in writing. Then the girl took a piece of paper and a pencil and wrote these lines spontaneously with great ease. We have transcribed them here from the text. I was making my thanksgiving and praying for things. He answered me I asked him to give me a cross since I was living without suffering except the suffering of not having a cross. And he answered yes. I will give it to you. And with much feeling, I went on praying. And I said to him, Why is the miracle coming? To convert many people? He answered, To convert the whole world. Will Russia be converted? It also will be converted, and so everyone will love our hearts. Will the chastisement come afterwards? He did not answer me. Why do you come to my poor heart, without my meriting it? I certainly do not come for you. I come for all. When the miracle comes, will it be as if I were the only one who had seen the Virgin? He answered me, By your sacrifices, your patience, I will allow you to intercede for the accomplishment of the miracle. And I said to him, Wouldn't it be better for me to be with all the others? Or if not, that you don't use any of us to intercede? He told me, No. Will I go to heaven? And he answered me, You should love much and pray to our hearts. When will you give me a cross? And he didn't answer me, What will I be? He didn't answer me. He only told me that everywhere that I would be, I would have much to suffer. I said to him, Am I going to die soon? And he told me, You have to stay on earth to help the world. And I said to him, I am very small. I couldn't help in anything. And he told me, With your prayers and sufferings, you will help the world. When does one go to heaven? When one dies? He said to me, One never dies. I thought that we didn't go to heaven until we were resurrected. I asked him if St. Peter was at the gate of heaven to receive us. He told me no. While I was in this conversation, in this prayer with God, I felt myself out of the world. Jesus also told me that now his heart should be loved. Concerning priests, he told me that I must pray much, so that they would be holy and fulfill their duties, so that they would make others better, so that they would make me known to those who do not know me, and so that they would make me loved by those who know me and do not love me. Signed Conchita Gonzalez Message of June 18, 1965 Six months in advance, that is at the end of 1964, Conchita had announced from the vision that on June 18, 1965, she would have an apparition of the Archangel St. Michael. This long wait permitted many foreigners to know the prophetic announcement and enabled them to come to Garabandal in time. French, Belgians, Germans, and a great number of Americans attended. Naturally, many Spanish people were present as well. At about 11.30, Conchita, protected by some young people of the village and by an important group from the civil guard, 
walked toward the Calleja. She passed through the multitude, arrived at the Cuadro and fell on her knees. This ecstasy continued for 20 minutes and was filmed for Italian television and N.O.D.O. Spanish news. Conchita received a message for the whole world. The exact text is the following. The message that the Most Holy Virgin has given to the world through the intercession of the angel St. Michael. The angel has said, Since my message of October 18th has not been complied with and has not been made known to the world, I advise you that this is the last one. Before the cup was filling up, now it is overflowing. Many priests are on the road to perdition, and they are taking many souls with them. The Eucharist is given less and less importance. With our own efforts we should avoid the wrath of God. If we ask pardon with sincere hearts, he will forgive us. I, your mother, through the intercession of the angel St. Michael, ask you to amend your lives. You are already in the last warnings. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Ask us sincerely, and we will give it to you. You should make more sacrifices. Think of the Passion of Jesus. Signed Conchita Gonzalez. Apparition on November 13, 1965 First, we reproduce one of Conchita's letters, written to Fr. Alba, S.J. from Barcelona, as an introduction. It is accompanied by some explanatory notes, Ave Maria. Dear everyone, I understand from these two girls who have arrived in our group that you cannot come here even though it is your desire. I send you my affectionate greeting, and I promise you my poor prayers in front of the tabernacle and the Virgin. I hope that your desire is to love God and His Mother more and more, it is our desire as well, and to overcome our faults. I ask for your prayers for myself and my friends, since we need many to be very humble and to give Jesus what He asks. Pray so that one day we will be nuns in the service of God, so that we can help people who need it. This is our desire, but we are very weak and need you to help us. The Virgin told me on January 1, 1965, that the Catholic Christians who don't think about the other world, of heaven or hell, should think about it so that our lives can be more united with Christ, and so that we should think and meditate more on the passion of Jesus. We should do it, but not only do it ourselves, we should make others do it. Then we will see how we feel at the doors of happiness with God, and we will accept our crosses with joy and love for God, with much affection for all, and in union of prayers. Signed Conchita Gonzalez. Reproduction of a letter from Conchita to Fr. Gustavo Morelos, Mexico, in which she announces that she has had a locution, that she will have an apparition at the Pines, Saturday the 13th, and that she will give the Most Holy Virgin an object to kiss, telling her that it is for Fr. Morelos. Hail Mary. San Sebastian de Garabandal, November 8, 1965. Reverend and dear Fr. Morelos, see, before receiving your response, I am writing to you again to say that I have had a locution from the Virgin, and she has told me, Go to the Pines on Saturday, and you will see me there. Bring me many religious objects, and I will kiss all of them so you will distribute them, and through the use of them my son will work prodigies. I will give you one of the kissed objects. When I give it to be kissed, I am going to tell our mother that it is for Fr. Morelos. I have finished my diary, but I am going to begin another. Pray for me so that I will go to the convent soon, and so that I will be good. In union through prayer. Signed Conchita Gonzalez. As the letter from Conchita continues, she describes her apparition to Fr. Morelos, on Saturday, November 13th, as announced by the Virgin during a locution in the church, I saw her in the pines. It was a special apparition to kiss religious objects, and then to distribute them afterward. They have great importance. I had a great desire for that day to come, so that I could once again see the one who has caused the joy of God within me, the Virgin with the child Jesus in her arms. It was raining, but that didn't matter to me. I went up to the pines and I carried many rosaries with me, which had been given to me so that I could distribute them. As the Virgin had told me in the locution, I brought them for her to kiss. I went up to the pines alone, very sorry for my faults and saying to myself that I would not fall into them any more, since I was sorry at the thought of presenting myself to the Mother of God without ridding myself of them. When I arrived at the pines I began to take out the rosaries I carried, and while I was taking them out, I heard a very sweet voice, the voice of the Virgin, 
which is distinguishable from all others, and it called me by my name. I answered, What? And in this moment I saw her with the child Jesus in her arms. She came dressed as usual, and was smiling broadly. I said to her, I have come to bring these rosaries to be kissed. And she said to me, I see that. When I brought them I was chewing gum, but when I saw her, I stopped chewing and put it on a tooth. She knew that I had the gum and said, Conchita, why don't you throw away your gum and offer it as a sacrifice for the glory of my son? I was ashamed, and I removed my gum and threw it on the ground. Afterward, she said to me, Do you remember what I told you on your saint's day that you would suffer much on earth? Well, I am telling you again. Have confidence in us, and offer it willingly to our hearts, for the good of your brethren, because in that way you will be more united with us. I said, How unworthy I am, O our mother, of so many graces I have received from you, and I come here today carrying the small cross I have now. She said to me, Conchita, I do not come only for you, but for all of my children, with the desire that they will come closer to our hearts. And she asked me, Give the objects to me, so that I may kiss all that you carry. And I gave her everything. I carried a cross with me and she kissed it, then said to me, Pass it over the child Jesus' hands. I did it, and he didn't say anything. I said to him, I will bring this cross with me to the convent, but he didn't say anything. After kissing the objects, she said to me, My son will accomplish prodigies through the kisses I have given here. Distribute them to others of course, this is what I will do. After this, she asked me to say petitions for the others, as they had asked me. I did, and she said to me, Tell me, Conchita, tell me about my children, I hold all of them beneath my mantle. I said, It is very small, it will not cover all of them. She smiled. Do you know, Conchita, why I didn't come on June 18th to give the message to the world? Because it pained me to say it, but it had to be said for your own good and for the glory of God if you fulfill it. I love you very much and desire your salvation in order to unite you around the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Is it true, Conchita, that you will respond to me? I said to her, If I always see you, yes, but if not, I don't know, because I am very bad. Do your part, and we will help you, as also my children Loli, Jacinta, and Mari Cruz she had only been there a short time, when she also said to me, this will be the last time you see me here, but I will always be with you and with all my children. After that she added, Conchita, why don't you visit my son more in the tabernacle? Why do you allow yourself to be carried away by laziness so as not to visit him when he waits for you day and night? As I have already written, it was raining a lot and the virgin and the child Jesus were not wet. When I was seeing her, I didn't realize that it was raining, but when I stopped seeing her, I was wet. I said to her, Oh, how happy I am when I see you. Why don't you bring me with you now? And she answered me, Remember what I told you on your saint's day when presenting yourself before God. You must show your hands full of good works done for your brethren and for the glory of God. Now your hands are empty. Nothing more. I had passed this happy time with my mother in heaven and my best friend, and with the child Jesus. I have stopped seeing them, but I continue to feel them. Once again there is left in my soul a peace and a happiness, and a great desire to overcome my faults so as to love with all my strength the hearts of Jesus and Mary, since they love us so much. Previously the Virgin told me that Jesus did not send the punishment to discourage us, but to reprimand us for not paying attention, and to help us. He sends the warning to purify us, so that we will see the love He has for us in the miracle. For this reason, He wants us to fulfill the message. The warning will be seen and will happen in all places and be felt by every person, it is like a punishment. It will be seen what has been caused by our sins. I think that it will bring much good, not so that we will be discouraged, but for our sanctification. For F. R. Morelos, I have received your letter, and I am answering it today. I did not send this before because I couldn't. I hope you pray for me, because I need it. Many greetings from my mother and Seraphim. In Union Through Prayer Signed Conchita Gonzalez In September of 1965, 
Fr. Gustavo Morelos traveled to Spain because he wanted to make the spiritual exercises and afterward to dedicate some time to studying the apparitions of the Most Holy Virgin in San Sebastián de Garabandal, Santander, Spain. The news had arrived in Mzico. He returned to his country on November 7th, and to his great surprise he found a letter from Conchita, dated the 8th of the same month. In it she announced that she would have a visit from the Virgin in the Pines, a document that was reproduced in the previous pages. What interested the father most about this letter was the promise that Conchita made, that when she saw the Most Holy Virgin, she would give an object to be kissed, saying, This object is for Fr. Morelos. The father anxiously awaited Conchita's account of her meeting with our sweet mother. Finally, on a very significant day, December 25th, the father had in his hands the letter, which we reproduced here, on July 4th, 1966, Conchita wrote another letter to give two pieces of news, first, that she had returned to the village. Second, that the crucifix she had promised, it had been the first shed ass to be kissed, had been given to Fr. Andrew. Conchita's Locution with Our Lord in Pamplona, February 13, 1966, and the trip to Rome. On Sunday, February 13, in the moment of giving thanks to God after communion, I received a great happiness and at the same time a greater sorrow and feeling of disillusion. I heard the voice of Christ and he said this, Conchita, you have come here to school to prepare yourself to become my spouse and to follow me. Didn't you tell me, Conchita, that you want to do my will? Now you want to follow your own will. Do you want to continue like this your whole life? I have chosen you to be in the world and to face many challenges for me. I want all of this for your holiness and for you to offer it for the salvation of the world. You should talk to the world about Mary. Remember that in June you asked me if you would be a nun. I told you, in whatever role you will find a cross, suffering, and I will tell you this again now. Conchita, have you felt me calling you to be my spouse? No, because I have not called you. I asked, and how does one feel your call to be a nun? He told me, don't worry about this, you will not feel it. I said, then you don't love me, Jesus? He said, Conchita, you ask me this? Who has redeemed you? Do my will and you will find my love. Examine yourself well. Think about others more, and don't pay attention to temptations. If you are faithful to my love, you will conquer many temptations. Be intelligent in what I have told you, spiritually intelligent. Don't close the eyes of your soul, and don't be deceived by anyone. Love humility, simplicity. Never think that what you have done is much. Think about what you still have to do, not to gain heaven, but for the world, to accomplish my divine will, that your soul will be prepared. Whoever has a soul disposed to hearing me will know my will. I want to tell you, Conchita, that before the miracle you will suffer much. There will be very few who believe you. Your own family will believe that you have deceived them. I want all of this for your sanctification and so the world will accomplish the message. I want to warn you that the rest of your life will be a continual suffering. Do not be disturbed. In suffering am I with Mary whom you love so much. I asked him if Rome also would not believe me, and he told me, don't worry about whether they believe you or not. I will do everything. But I will also give you suffering. Whoever suffers for me, I am with him. Contradictions and Retractions from the beginning of the apparitions, the vision had announced to the girls that there would come a time when they would contradict themselves and that they would also deny that they had seen her. The girls repeated this frequently. To be more precise, we will transcribe some of the, the texts in which they announced the future retractions, and it is perfectly explicit, on page 60 of the manuscript Diary of Conchita, the following passage from 1963 reads like this, From the first days of the apparitions, the Virgin had told the four of us, Loli, Jacinta, Mari Cruz, and I, that we would contradict each other, and that our parents would not get along. She told us that we would even deny that we had seen the Virgin and the Angel. All of this happened in January. We wondered about this, of course, because she had told us. In a letter addressed to William A. Nolan, from the United States, dated March 22, 1965, Conchita wrote, Besides the message, the Virgin told us many other things about the message. She also told us that we would contradict each other very much. 
According to a locution that Lowly had in November of 1965, the Virgin announced a period of doubts in these words. She told me that I have to suffer much in this world and that I will have many trials. She said that I will doubt all that I have seen and that this will make me suffer more than anything else. In a locution on February 13, 1966, about which we have already spoken and given the complete text, our Lord warns Conchita in the following manner. I repeat that you have much to suffer from now until the miracle. Few will believe you. Your own family will believe that you have deceived them. But it is I who wants this, as I have told you, for your sanctification and so the world will fulfill the message. I want to warn you that the rest of your life will be a continual suffering. What has been accomplished with regard to these announcements as of now? Conchita writes in her diary about Mari Cruz. Mari Cruz continues saying that she has not seen the Virgin. This retraction goes back to 1963. It is said that Conchita denied for the first time at the age of 12 years old, when she was brought to Santander at the end of July in 1961. It is said that on this occasion, she signed a paper which stated that she had not seen the Virgin. We do not have any document or anything with greater detail about this first denial. It is possible to think beforehand that it has very little importance compared to what follows. Loli and Jacinta, at the same time as Conchita, confronted two periods of doubts and contradictions. The first was in January of 1963, and the second happened in 1966. I have here what it says in Conchita's diary about the first period. In the month of January of 1963, all that the Most Holy Virgin told us happened. We have come to contradict each other. At first we began contradicting each other, but then we began denying that we had seen the Most Holy Virgin. We even went to confession. Yet inside, we knew that the Archangel and the Most Holy Virgin had appeared to us. And later, I wonder that I said all of this, because my conscience is perfectly at peace since I know that I have seen the Virgin. The second period of doubts began, at least for Conchita during Lent in 1966. This began with strong temptations against her faith in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. This was not the first time. But, at the beginning of Holy Week, these temptations became so violent that Conchita stopped receiving communion. The religious who were responsible for the child's education at the school persuaded her to overcome these temptations and receive communion again by saying that to be tempted is not a sin. Conchita consented to receiving daily communion, but then she began to feel a force that impeded her from going near the Eucharist. She had to be violent with herself in order to persevere. According to her own words, she expressed herself like this, It seemed to me that they simply gave me a little piece of bread. These temptations against the faith were followed by doubts about the objective reality of her visions. Conchita questioned whether it had not all been a trick of her imagination or whether she had been a victim of some psychological or mental disorder. At the same time, Loli and Jacinta were in different places, kilometers from Conchita, and were suffering from the same anguished interior phenomena about the reality of the apparitions. These doubts increased during the following months. Before this, the three girls had met in Garabandal. In the middle of August, they decided to go and communicate their doubts and fears to the priest. I have a letter from Conchita here, written to F. R. Morelos, dated October 13, 1966, in which she tells of the difficult test that is happening to her. The interview mentioned in this letter between Conchita and the Bishop of Santander, F. R. Vicente Pucol, was very long. It lasted seven hours, two in the morning, and five in the afternoon. Conchita was very happy with the way the bishop treated her. She declared that all she had written in her diary was true except the fact that she had seen the Virgin and the Angel. She explained that all that had happened during the years of the apparitions was like a series of dark coincidences to her. She also said that the calls were true because she remembered the sensation perfectly. This visit from the Bishop of Santander to Pamplona took place in the first days of September of 1966. There was another interview between Conchita and the Bishop but this one was in Santander. Conchita said that on this occasion she had the intention of telling the prelate the date of the announced miracle. But at the moment she wanted to say it, she forgot it completely, and then as soon as she crossed the threshold of the Episcopal Palace, the date of the miracle returned to her with total clarity. 
These interviews between Conchita and the Bishop of Santander ended with the bishop asking her to sign her declarations. The parents of some of the girls said that they couldn't sign the declarations until they explained what had happened during these phenomena that they had observed in the girls during three years. This attitude of the girls' parents is very understandable since they are simple mountain people accustomed to seeing everything clearly. After this, many people had the opportunity of speaking with the girl. When, for example, Fr. Gustavo Morelos was present in January 1967, he showed Conchita an image made in Mexico by the painter Octavio so that the messages given by the Virgin in Garabandal might be known. Upon seeing it, Conchita made a gesture that she liked it, and took it in her hands. She began to make detailed observations to the priest. For example, that she didn't wear a crown, that the stars that circled her head were interwoven to form what we would call a crown that she didn't wear a sash on her waist, that her face looked straight ahead, that she carried the scapular in her right hand like a maniple. The next day, F.R. Morelos accompanied Loli and Jacinta to their respective schools and, with the same image above her desk, Loli consulted the priest. She took it in her hands and said, Father, the virgin that we saw did not wear a crown, and her head was not tilted to one side. She didn't have a sash, and she carried the scapular in her right hand like a maniple. These observations made by a different girl kilometers away is an eloquent proof that the girls, even in a period of doubts and denials, carried within them an image of the Most Holy Virgin that captivated their senses and their consciences. They also questioned Conchita about what she called her. Denials. We have reproduced a particularly interesting dialogue. Question. When you said that you saw the Virgin, were you lying? Conchita. No, I told the truth. Question. And now when you say that you haven't seen her, are you lying? Conchita. No, I'm telling the truth. Question. Is your conscience really tranquil about this matter? Conchita. Yes. Question. And when you said that you saw the Virgin, was your conscience clear then? Conchita. Yes, of course. Question. In which of these two instances was your conscience the most tranquil? Conchita. When I said that I saw the Virgin... Then my conscience was completely peaceful. Now, of course, I am peaceful, but at the same time I have something deep within my conscience. Question. Why do you say now that you have not seen the Virgin? Conchita. Only the Most Holy Virgin knows why. She made things this way. In a letter that Conchita wrote in November of 1966, this passage can be read. I continue thinking the same thing about my retractions and I accept all of this as a cross that our Lord has sent to me. Sometimes I think, if all of this has not been true, then it is not a cross, or anything at all. In closing, we will cite from the writings of another Spanish theologian, the Reverend Father Lucio Rodrigo, about the retractions and doubts of the girls. This note is dated August 10, 1966. This writing describes the moment in which Loli and Jacinta reached the low point of their doubts. Of course, the author of this note could not know about Conchita's culminating moment, which happened a little later, around August 15th. All that believe in the reality of the supernatural and divine regarding the facts of Garabandal should not let their faith be affected by the fact that some of the girls say that these phenomena have been nothing more than marvelous comedy, capably executed by them as a game of sweet illusion caused by a sickness from the devil. The reason is the following. If we have concluded that we believe in the supernatural and divine character of these phenomena, it has not been because we have based it upon what the girls have told us about their visions in those moments, whether it be during the moments of ecstasy or after, without considering it in conjunction with the phenomena that we have attended, or that others who have faith affirm that they have seen. We have submitted this unity of facts to a severe critical analysis, and we have arrived at the conclusion that these phenomena were not and could not have been invented by the girls, nor could they have resulted from their imaginations with a pathological or demonic origin. This does not exclude that some occasional fact or isolated situation might have been the fruit of their imaginations or an illusion. We add that this reasoning must always be valid, although Conchita affirms that the other girls did it, but that all that happened to her was nothing more than an able simulation performed by her, or a game of illusion. For that reason, if our conclusions and our beliefs in the supernaturality of the phenomena of Garabandal have not been founded in what the girls said during the time of the apparitions, 
but rather in the concrete facts and real evidence seen by me and by other witnesses. It simply diminishes what really happened or what happened in these apparitions. No one has a right to destroy these facts or what the girls might say in the future. They are having an illusion now, but we are not. Camilla's August 10, 1966 F.R. Lucio Rodrigo S.J. Testimony of the Rev. F.R. Ramon Maria Andrew Regarding his visit to Garabandal on October 18, 1961 Question. On October 18, 1961 you were in Garabandal. Could you tell us what happened during this visit and the circumstances accompanying it? Father, I would be happy to do so. I arrived in Garabandal on October 17. During that day on October 18, I saw an immense multitude of people arrive in the village. This presented much taking into account the difficulty of the way and that the day was an actual deluge. The distance from Kosil, which I traveled on foot, is about 6 kilometers. That day I was happy and tranquil. I didn't have any reason to be any other way. During the months of August and September, and including what had happened in October, I had been a witness to many events in the mountain village. I had many happy memories from those months. Everything seemed good to me. Question. How were your relations with the Bishop of Santander? Father, my relations with the diocesan authority was excellent. Fr. Doroteo Fernandez, apostolic administrator of the diocese, had authorized me to go up to Garabandal to say Mass, to preach, and to hear confession as well. I had the opportunity to visit the bishop on various occasions. On these visits I could disclose my personal opinions. The same thing as it refers to me, happened also with Fr. Eugenio Betia Aldazabal to my brothers, Fr. Alejandro and Fr. Marcelino. Question. What was the most pressing motive for your visit to Garabandal on October 18, 1961? Father, you know that the girls had announced that the proclamation of the message would be on this day. I suppose that this would be important. Many people must have thought this because in spite of the difficulties of this day of deluge, there were about 5,000 people who assembled in the village that day. Question. Conchita says in her diary that this immense multitude went up to the pines around 10 o'clock at night to hear the message. Did you ascend also? Father, yes, I ascended. I was among the last making this laborious ascent. It was necessary to travel 500 meters up the mountain, and on this day it was wet and muddy. After a while, I was covered in mud. Some flashlights made light in front and on the sides. The water ran down every part of the mountain. During the ascent, I slipped continually, and I fell several times. This happened to almost everyone. I was halfway there when I suddenly felt a brutal, intense inner bitterness. It was a mixture of these sad feelings that was difficult to define. In that moment, everything seemed to crumble away from me. It was an extreme impression of intense loneliness. The four girls were nothing more than sick children. I asked myself, why am I here? My brother had died, and that was all that was definitively true. This painful internal state worsened for a few moments. I can say truthfully that never in my whole life had I felt such intense desolation. I thought about abandoning that which had not yet happened. I felt like it was nothing more than a sad village joke. I was still for a little while. Sometimes I looked at the sky. I know that at that moment I would have liked for the miracle that the girls had announced to happen. My deception was absolute. I changed places and stayed there for a while. I cannot say how long it was that I was alone, feeling people pass me going up to the pines in the darkness. It was dark and silent. I have never felt more alone. Suddenly, a lantern shone in my direction. A friend who was descending from the pines recognized me. He came to where I was. This is marvelous, he said to me. I let him say this while I thought to myself that tomorrow he would understand how absurd all of this was. I descended to the village with him, without showing anything of what I was thinking. We entered a house where they were already waiting for us. After a little while, Amaluka, Loli's sister, entered. She came towards me and two others and said to us, Loli says that you, you, and you should come. I heard her, but I didn't want to go. Finally I said I will do a work of mercy. I'll visit the sick. And I decided to say goodbye definitively. Question. 
And did you go to Loli's house? Father, yes. I went up to the attic of Seferino's house. There were a number of people there. It was a group of twelve or fourteen, and Loli was with them. The girls seemed content, even happy. I was thinking about the thoughtlessness of this girl and the others when Loli smiled and said to me, Sit down. There was no chair. But there was a type of cot in the corner. I sat automatically on the end of it. Loli sat next to me. She was twelve years old but she led the conversation, which will live in my memory forever. Among the three of you, there is one who does not believe. She said, Do you know who it is? Yes, I told her. Do you? Yes, I know, she answered me. The virgin told me. When? Just now, when I was coming down from the pines. Tell me who it is, I insisted. I don't dare, was her response. If it was one of the other two, yes, it's me, I affirmed. I don't believe any of it. A smile of intelligence appeared on Loli's childlike face and she added, The virgin told us, The priest is doubting everything and is suffering very much. Call him and tell him not to doubt, that it is true and it is I, the virgin, who is appearing. And so that he will believe you, tell him, when you went up you were happy, when you came down you were sad. I was stupefied. I looked at Loli, unsure of what to say. And she added, she talked a lot about you to Conchita. In that moment I got up. I was confused, but I understood then that I had not arrived at my final goodbye. I took my two friends who were looking fixedly at my face while they said to me, What did she say to you? What happened? Without responding to these questions, I pushed them saying, Let's go to Conchita's house. Anasita opened the door. My greeting was this question, Can I see Conchita? She is already in bed, Anasita said, but you can go up. There were no doors to open. I went up the few stairs and I arrived at her room and called to her there where Conchita was in bed with her cousin Lasiuka. Conchita was twelve and her cousin was eleven. As soon as she saw me she said before I could open my mouth, Father, are you happy, or are you still sad? I didn't know how to respond. I answered, Loli told me that the virgin spoke about me to you. For at least fifteen minutes, she answered. And what has she told you? I can't say, was her response. Then I will remain the same as before. I commented in a loud voice. Conchita smiled and said to me, There is something that I can tell you. When you ascended, you were happy, and when you descended, you were sad. The virgin told me everything you were thinking and when you were thinking it. You thought, now I'm going to America. And in another place, now I don't want to know anything about so-and-so, and so-and-so. And, -so, and that you suffered a lot. She told me to say this and also to warn you that all of this has happened now so that you will not doubt again. I was left without words. The next day Conchita showed with her finger on a photograph the exact spots on the mountain where I had been thinking each one of these things. It was something important for me. All that Conchita had said was true. She told me for the virgin, all of this has happened in advance so that you will not doubt again. I have experienced other moments of doubt but none has been as anguished as the one on October 18th. Frequently, I have been given the news, including official decisions, which have ended the matter. But I have seen time and time again the same questioner stay open to it. The experience of October 18th, 1961 has served me in many ways to question how the girls, especially Conchita, could know so much detail about an internal experience of mine and then tell it to me with such clarity and sureness. Official note from the Bishop of Santander about the happenings of San Sebastián de Garabandal, 1965. We write this nota as part of our pastoral duty. The name of Garabandal and the news of the happenings produced during these years in this small mountain village in our diocese has arrived to us through the means of social communication, as well as to the whole country and the European continent. International agents have divulged graphic information and special reports. They talk of apparitions of Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, and of spiritual messages communicating the Most Holy Virgin's desires. At the same time they ask us to authorize these happenings so that they can be united with other venerable Marian devotions that are universally known. The Bishop of Santander has gathered an ample amount of documents during these years about all that has occurred. He has not closed the file on this matter. 
he will always write politely on all elements of judgment that are sent to him. There have been three official notas at this point, and all have tried to orient the judgment of the faithful. This nota will be the fourth. His conclusion to this point regarding the facts is that there is no reason to modify the judgment that has already been given. That is, his opinion is that the supernaturality of these phenomena is not evident. It has been carefully examined. Consequently, it follows that this diocesan authority renews the measures taken so that the atmosphere of confusion will not increase because of the massive propaganda that exists outside of the spirit and letter of the sacred canons and is promoted through news, newspaper articles, magazines, graphic information, reviews and itineraries, and other similar methods. We remember that according to Canon 1309 No. 5, by the same law, books and pamphlets that refer to new apparitions, revelations, visions, prophecies, miracles, or that introduce new devotions are prohibited if they are published without observing the prescriptions of the canons. We make known that at the present moment we have not granted imprimatur any book, pamphlet, article, or review on this matter. We extend this prohibition as far as our diocesan authority reaches on the publication of articles or information that has not been submitted to the censor of the Diocese of Santander. We ask all of the faithful Christians to abstain from worsening the atmosphere in San Sebastian de Garabandal with their presence. This atmosphere has been created by these apparitions and spiritual communications. We want to make clear that we have not found anything deserving of ecclesiastical censure with regard to condemning either the doctrines or the spiritual recommendations that have been promulgated because of the events of Garabandal and so far as they are directed to faithful Christians. On the contrary, they contain exhortations to prayer and sacrifice, to Eucharistic worship, to devotion to Our Lady under traditional praiseworthy forms, and to the holy fear of God offended by our sins. They simply repeat ordinary church doctrine in these matters. We recognize the good faith and the religious fervor of the persons who go up to San Sebastian de Garabandal and who merit the greatest respect. We want to support their religious fervor so that, trusting completely in the church's hierarchy and its magisterium, they might comply exactly with our publicly reiterated recommendations. Regarding the priests, as a result of the special importance that their intervention can have in the active form of their participation and collaboration in the development of these facts, as well as in the form of simple presence as a spectator, we prohibit in an explicit and formal matter their attendance without express license, to be obtained personally in each case, from the diocesan authority. We declare that the licenses are suspended, ipso facto, in the Diocese of Santander for those who violate our formal warning. The Supreme Holy Congregation of the Holy Office has had contact with the Diocese of Santander to obtain the proper information in this serious matter. Santander, July 8, 1965 Eugenio, Bishop A.A. of Santander Part of the original text of some of Conchita's notes I would talk to you the whole day, but I would bore you. In the darkness of this silent night, and looking at the blue sky, I see your creation, the stars, the moon, all of these things that you have made for our good. I feel very united with you when looking at the sky. I want those who don't know you and who are separated from you to accept my prayers and for you to accept my prayers this night, and also my timid and miserable sacrifices, so that these souls might be nearer to you, Jesus, and to Mary, Mother of the Church, especially for those that don't know you. Why have you chosen me, knowing what I am? to tell your sorrowful messages. It is a very great grace, and you know, my Jesus, that I realize the responsibility that I have. How will I fulfill it, Jesus? I cannot enter within the message and make them fulfill it, and some people believe that I have invented this. Why do you let this happen? You already know that it cannot be completed like this, with them doubting. Oh, my Jesus, we meditate on your five wounds so that we can offer sacrifices happily. Forgive us, Lord, because we are joined to you. I would like to visit you more. I want to be your little light that calls and lights up for you and grows brighter to give light to souls that want to come where you are. I also want to be the part within the door of the tabernacle so I can be more united with you. I want to be so much, but I am nothing, nothing, nothing. But since I am the daughter of Mary, the mother of God, I am redeemed with the blood of Christ crucified, and because of that I am something. Conchita's Prayer, 
January 1, 1967. Mother, I ask you for this new year, not to be vain. I ask you also for sincerity, gratitude and love for you. Lord, this is what I ask of you this year. Give me the spirit of sacrifice of prayer. Let me receive communion with more fervor and visit the blessed sacrament more often. Forgive me, Lord. Thank you for all of the good that you have given us. Thank you for all of the good that you have given my family and forgive us for not always doing what you ask. Lord, thank you for this new year and forgive me for last year. Lord, I pray for all those that you have commended to me. Above all for those who need you most. Lord, I also pray for the souls in purgatory. I pray for all of the sick. For those who spread the message. And for those who don't want to know anything about the message. I pray for everyone. I also pray for those who write to me now, and for all who have written to me telling me about their needs. Lord, I tell you about them, although I cannot tell you about all of them, Lord, you already know. Mother, listen to all of us, tell your son and help and give them what they pray for, if it is for the greater glory of you and Jesus and good for our souls. Lord, forgive those you have entrusted to me. Lord, I pray so that your message will spread more and more and that all who spread the message will do it for you. Lord, thank you for them. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hail, Mary most pure, conceived without sin. Amen.